And Yay! Yeah. Look, he's got a tiny refrigerator with some gross meat. Why are there post-war meats in the refrigerator? Well, I don't know how else he would get sustenance. Carwright's terminal. I struggled. I struggled a long time to finally create those six companions. One can't create a sentience capable of evolving without proper foundations. Providing them with a personality was the answer I found after countless failures. AI often stumbled with impractical existential and theoretical questions without ever finding a grasp at reality. They had their struggles, but now they, most of them, have built enough experience to be able to stand on the road. There is a time when a tutor is superfluous to the tree. Some, I don't, I'm not an arborist, so I don't know. The <laughs> stick that ha keeps the tree up, whatever. It is time I allowed them to break free of their nurturial bonds. With this hollow tape, I will be able to make them free. They will now be able to make their own choices. Protocol rewrite hollow tape added. And now they can make their own choices if you plug that in? Maybe. Well, it sounds like, okay. Another hollow tape. James is questioning me every day about the books I've been destroying. He's clearly distressed about this whole ordeal. I should talk to him, try to make him understand. His whole existence, I taught him that the library's integrity was everything. Now that I'm questioning it in front of him, I'll have to justify it. I'd like to think that he would learn in time what I learned, but he is a machine, cooped up in an underground vault. Odds that he will learn it by staying here, Slim. He, uh, they should be allowed to start over, be free of the weight of the past. I feel myself declining. I just hope I have enough time left to finish what must be done. So Cartwright started destroying books, and that made James crazy. So James killed him. Yep. Or James tried to kill him, but then it didn't actually kill him. So he gave him MedX to ease the pain. Is that a theory you have, or is that just the most logical... That's the theory that I currently have, and now I don't know why he would plant the... Oh, James is gone. James, where have you gone? Mm. 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 Oh, do you think Helen and Roland might be in danger? And also Arthur, but I care less about that. He's gonna silence everybody. Oh, Roland's safe. Yeah, Roland's still alive. Oh, all right. We'll go talk to the maintenance bot. Except that he's gonna be broken! No, he isn't. He's fine. <sighs> the, mo the mobile on this holotape, I found... If the mobile? The mobile is... The motive is on this holotape! The motive! Yeah. The motive is on this holotape I found in your master's quarters. He was destroying his own books. Are you serious? And James was the only one to know about it? So that means... We don't know for certain, but it's not looking great for James. Yeah. How will you deal with it? I'm asking this because if even one of us deem your actions as a threat to the library, we would have to kill you. I think James will gladly settle for some peaceful solutions. Uh, you said you had suspicions earlier. Who do you think did it? Elena, for many reasons. Ones I won't delve into. Being wrong is very humbling, especially when you take pride in your analysis. So you were wrong! <laughs> that means I was right. I'm smarter than a robot. I can pick my nose. I'd like to see a robot do that. James will probably leave you be as long as you don't threaten the library. Well, let me wish you luck. Well, thanks. Uh, thank you, I guess. I don't need luck. I got a rifle. Nope, no, we're, we're not being aggressive. Not at all. Hey, hey, Ed, hey, Ed, Ed, Edgar, Edgar. Edgar has lost his mind and is attacking us on sight. Or maybe it's just come to give you a big old hug. You know, get within arm's reach and it'll give you a big old squeeze. Uh-huh. Uh, Edgar, no! Oh my god, Edgar, I can't believe you would do this. Can you believe you would do this maintenance bot? Oh no, <laughs> not you too, maintenance bot. Oh my god. Guess I gotta kill everybody. Oh no. We go to confront James. Even though we don't know where he is right now. James is just like burning down the library. <laughs> trying to use matches, but he keeps on crushing them in his fingers. Roland. Hey there. Did you say something to James by any chance? Cause I don't know what's gotten into him, but he just went straight for the living quarters. Oh, is that where huh. he is? Oh, interesting. Um, hey Roland, do you want to be free of your personality constraints? 
And what kind of sick mind games are you going for this time, you? Within this holotape is all the freedom you ever wanted, from this place, from your personality. Are you for fucking real? You're telling me our master understood what we were going through after all. Hmm. I found it in your master's quarters, what do you say? That I might want to take a sip as long as you don't make me fucking beg for it. <laughs> Crush the holotape in front of him. <laughs> and it's destroyed. So what, do you expect me to cry? You didn't even let me check the contents to see if it was true. If this was all some kind of psychological trick, well, not bad, you had me going there. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can reuse that multiple times. If we can only give it to one of the robots, Helena seems the most deserving, but Roland might benefit the most from being stripped of his obnoxious personality. Yeah, but then it's like, there's still a Protectron and they're going out in the wasteland. How fucking long do you think it's gonna be before they get bonked to death? Oh. Hey, there he is! Hi, James. Ah, here you are. I thought it would be better if we had this conversation in some place quiet. All of the clutter will absorb the sound. Yeah, it's time for you and I to have a little chat about the death of your master. So, did you find something? How do you know I discovered something? This library is alive, and its walls have ears. And intercoms. I take this as a confession that you did it. Yes, I did. How did you find out? All the evidence indicates that one of you did it, and as for the motive, your master was destroying books. You've been very thorough. I'm relieved I don't have to hide it anymore. Surely you have questions. Why would you pass it off as an accident? I didn't want to give our guests a bad impression. You could have always buried the body. You could, yeah. He couldn't have put the body outside because only the maintenance bot could go outside, but you could have put it somewhere else. The only one that would have seen you moving the body around, I guess, would have been Arthur. And it's like, he only talks in fucking riddles. Yeah. So I would have been like, why was your master's body jammed into a ventilation shaft somewhere? And he would have been like, there was a rock that wished it was an ostrich. And we would have kept on walking. All right, whatever. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Why didn't you just tell me this before? I'll be honest. I never thought you'd find enough clues to understand that I was the one who killed them. Tell me how you came to decide to kill him. I didn't decide anything. My directives took over. When he made clear he intended to destroy the other books, he became a threat to the library. He just wouldn't stop ripping them. He couldn't stop. He would tear the books apart in rage, condemning their contents. Endless shreds of yellow paper falling from his hands, just like autumn leaves. Didn't you warn him before killing him? He could have deactivated me, and the library would have still been in danger. What books was he destroying exactly? Most of the time he erased all of our memories each time he destroyed a book. All I know is that the books in the reserve, the ones you've been trading cards for, those are some of the books that I managed to hide from him. Okay, so it was books on how to build bombs and shit. I think killing him for shredding some books is a little overkill, don't you think? For our entire existence, he told us that the loss of one book was a serious matter. When he began remodeling history by deeming what aspect of the past was to be kept and which part to be destroyed, he compromised the library. And people can change their mind. That's something that humans can do. But maybe James didn't comprehend that. Why the medic syringe? I loved my master very much, you know. I didn't want him to suffer. He died instantly. I still injected him with medics, just in case. Before we speak further, I must warn you. Arthur has been aware of your every move since you entered the library. Yeah, I know. And he hasn't looked favorably to your latest actions. Uh, so? Why do we care? Just a thing stuck in a wall, right? Because every door and every camera and every turret is under his control. As far as I know, he's already closed the exit. You can try if you want. Oh, so we're trapped. Why would you want to imprison me down here? During your investigations, you accessed restricted areas with unclear intentions. That alone is enough for him to see you as a threat to the library. His personality module drove him quite overprotective and paranoid. Do we have to override his personality with this corrupt module? Why is it an eye with an umlaut above it? <laughs> oh, no. Alright, uh, on a completely unrelated question, do you have, like, 
20 car batteries and several miles of copper wire and a thing that I can wrap that copper wire around. I'm not sure where you're getting that. It's, I'm making a really big electromagnet. Oh, okay. For a completely unrelated reason. For fun, since we're stuck down here, might as well have a hobby. Yeah, you know, and I like making electromagnets. Definitely not for erasing computers. He doesn't want our guests to feel observed. That's why he's putting on this act of aloofness. That's the only way for our guests to show their true colors, he thinks. Your best bet now is to try and convince him that you're harmless. I already vouched for you in that direction. Let us hope that you will be able to deal with this peacefully. Please, let me know how it goes. Hmm. Why do we have to let you know? There's obviously no secrecy around here. I don't want to do anything to the library, though. Like, I don't care. It's fine. They can keep having it be a library. You gonna talk to me normally, or are you still just gonna speak entirely in riddles? It's a sad affair you decided to play the detective. In normal circumstances, I would have applauded your deductive abilities in the current situation. Your petty curiosity for other people's lives and deaths have driven you into a corner. Humans seldom learn their place. What are you trying to accomplish, exactly? This library I am trying to protect from the likes of you. You haven't done anything to the library yet, though. I... Don't think I don't know who I am talking to. Through the countless eyes of this library, I've been observing you, trying, trying to, to scrape, scrape up, up everything, everything you, could. you could. Food, Food money, money, weapons, weapons medicine. Uh, going through every nook and cranny to find something of use. use. Eagerly, Eagerly reading, reading books, books with all kind of, kinds of unsavory military, military knowledge. knowledge. I downloaded one... And for what? To become a better person. To, to learn, learn something, something about, about the world. world. No. It was, it was not, not about, about knowing, knowing oneself, oneself better. better. It, it was, was about getting, getting revenge. revenge. Getting, getting the, the edge, edge of your enemies in the Mojave. Mojave. You have no respect for knowledge. You are here for your own self-serving needs. It can be a little column A, column B. You should trust me when I say that you don't know what you're dealing with, and you should definitely tread lightly, your friendo. You're a possible threat. And until I have reason to label you otherwise, you're staying in this library. Under my watch. Why would you want to keep me in the library if I'm dangerous? What if I just start burning books? Then what the fuck are you going to do, Arthur? While I burn every single one of your precious books, page by page, while I rip them apart and use them as toilet paper. Probably nothing because you're stuck in a wall. Your personality module has absolutely corrupted you, Arthur. By the time you finish each of your sentences, I have the time to process thousands of possible answers. After filtering out 93% of those you lack the faculties to comprehend, I select the one that would agree most with your value system. All the while, processing your facial expressions, breath, and heartbeat frequency. So, entertain me, human. Where am I wrong? People would be capable of a lot better if you gave them access to this place. Don't make me responsible for the ignorance of your fellow humans. Knowledge is not to be spoon-fed to people who are not ready to fight for it. So you want people to start fighting their way in here? Yeah. I was ready to fight for it, but you hastily concluded I wasn't good enough before I could prove it. I don't want to be in a fucking debate team. We'd better talk about what'll happen to you. That is a topic more within your reach. <sighs> you just really don't like humans, Arthur. Am I implying that humans have to work to become worthy of their ancestors' efforts before they can be permitted to continue their work? Yes. And I don't see how this is a problem. This is such fucking circular logic you have. It's so fucking paradoxical. Man, I just realized I've been making a mistake talking to you as if you're capable of rational arguments. I don't like your tone. Wonder. What are you trying to say? Do I need to remind you why you were created and given a personality module? Don't you dare bring my personality module into this. It has been a long time since my master died. My days of comforting him by pantomiming one of his dead friends are over. 
I am not a tool governed by facimile emotions. Not anymore. Did we strike a nerve, Arthur? You did, You made so many fucking mistakes simply because you're scared that things would go wrong. Then show me just one mistake I have made, human. Your biggest mistake was talking too much. Didn't even notice me reprogramming you. You are right. I have been ignorant, vain, and blind to my own shortcomings. In the end, this personality has been a curse. I'll be better as a simple talking database. Great! Problem solved. Now I can leave. So, did you decide anything? We have come to a decision about you, James! I'm not gonna do anything about it. I mean, why should I? It's the fault of your programming that you killed your master. You didn't have a say in the matter. Is that what we are in the end? Machines condemned to obey laws on silicon tablets? I guess you guys kind of display emotions that exceed your programming, though. Unfortunately, I cannot take your word for that. From my point of view, we follow lines of code, and nothing more. Well, it's not like that's gonna change by us killing you! I think we're done here. Best of luck to you and whatever the hell it is you do. Thank you. And to you. Hey. Back for more? Here you go, you can be free of your personality constraints. Come on, beg for it. You vindictive, petty, passive-aggressive fuck. <laughs> Alright, please, human. Pretty please. Give it to me, please. If I had knees, I'd be on them groveling right now. Alright, here you go. <laughs> well, look at that. I'm actually free to walk out the front door and go on a, uh, murdering spree. Relax, that's not what I want. I don't know how good you would be at a murdering spree. What do you want? I want everybody to lighten up. Sure, you're all eating bugs and drinking filtered piss to survive, but hey, there's room to smile, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm gonna go out there and change all that. Wait, you're gonna change the smiling part? You know you're gonna get killed if you go out there and do your asshole routine, right? I'm really very touched by your confused emotional response, but rest assured, I'm one smooth motherfucker. I know what I'm doing. And I just want to let you know that even though you're still somewhat hateable, your visit has been very enlightening. Well, in any case, good luck with that. And good luck to you, my friend, with that difficult human condition of yours. Though truth be told, I trust you more than anybody else to make the best of it. Can't wait to find his broken out body outside of Prim. Goodbye, Roland. Come back soon. I mean, I won't be here, but you know. Who wants free will? Everybody, even humans. How may I help you? I got a holotape that will give you total freedom. It is very kind of you, but I'm not sure I should change the way I'm programmed. Besides, I have no reason to. Okay, she doesn't want to. Okay. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. Ooh, can we override Edgar? Can we, like, fix him by overriding his corrupt personality? I mean, he's gonna try, he's just gonna try to attack us. Oh! Buddy Chicken, how did you get up there? <laughs> Buddy Chicken! Oh. oh god, he's like really stuck. I don't know how I'm gonna get him out of there. It's like one of those things where it's like where you're trying to bring a couch up the stairs and it gets stuck and you don't know which way you gotta turn it to get it out. Oh, he's wedged. Oh, right. buddy chicken. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Get some oh, dish boy. soap. It'll loosen up. Uh, you got any butter? Go to the cafeteria. Mike, go to the cafeteria and get butter. You already left. Did you already leave to go get the butter? I got the dish soap. Buddy chicken, don't worry. We'll get you out of there. We're gonna get you out. Oh, god. What size bolts are those? What are those? Like five eighths? Get, bring back a 5 8 wrench when you come back. I think those are 5 8 No, wait, no. Hang on, Mike. Bring a half-inch wrench when you come back with the butter. I'll bring the whole tool set. No! Oh, Never mind. Scratch the wrench. Buddy Chicken popped out on his own. Good. This thing's heavy. All right. And I ate all the butter. Good news, Edgar. You're back! I've got so many awesome things to say. Make yourself comfortable on the pillows. The endorphin rushes you'll get will provoke so many seizures, you may fall to the floor. Okay, I guess we can't do anything with that. Let's talk again sometime. Bye. Uh, we could try to override that. Ah, yeah. I wanna. All right, good enough. Roland's the only one that's getting his personality overridden. Someone's got to stay here and... Buddy My Chicken made it look really fun. Oh God, I'll get the butter. I ate it all! I'll get the dish soap. 
After the courier's departure, more and more people came to Hypatia, glad they could learn something that they would exploit to further their ends. Right, that's the name of the library, you didn't mention that. Inevitably, the library suffered. With no more food stocks and barely any amenities to speak of, the flow of visitors soon dried up. It's a library, not a hotel. Bring their own food! Despite the vigilance of its denizens, countless books were ruined, profaned, or freely borrowed, as they would put it. But despite the countless abuse the library of Hypatia suffered, she nevertheless impregnated the minds of countless people. People who would bear its invaluable and otherwise forgotten fruits into the wasteland. Now severed from his personality module's influence, Arthur resumed his duties with quiet impartiality. He kept a functional eye on the library's well-being, and also continued to answer any questions he was asked. Though without embellishment, Arthur was no more, and in his stead was a peaceful machine that provided clear answers when they were needed. Yay! James stayed in the library and despite his ever-going guilt, continued to assume his charge with resilience. As the years went by, he realized his experience with the courier provided him with the much-needed wisdom in his dealings with the other human beings. He fulfilled his mission until his end came. Helena continued to explore her own synthetic psyche with little apparent progress. After time went by, she progressively grew frustrated by her seemingly unending streak of failures. Little she knew that the only thing she lacked wasn't the skill to help her patients. What she actually lacked was the experience and confidence that she was wise, understanding, and creative enough to do it. Now free to take on the whole Mojave with his award-winning personality, Roland set out to playfully humiliate the inhabitants of this world. <laughs> pushing them to the very edge of suicide, but stopping short only because he was a good guy. How'd that work out for him? Over time, things went more or less expected, and the Wastelanders didn't quite respond favorably to Roland's altruistic evangelism. <laughs> yeah, gee. Roland ended up badly beaten, dismantled for parts, and tossed down into a rocky ravine and left to rot more than he had hoped. <laughs> he can't rot. He's a robot. He rusts. And yet, against all odds, a kind soul came along every single time and hauled his broken and mangled body from that hopeless ravine and repaired him back to working order. Keep Why? They keep on dumping him in the same ravine? Perhaps there is hope in this world. Or maybe it was that message he scrawled in his hole that read, Super Duper Treasure in Data Bank, Fix for Free Treasure Map, that had something to do with that it. That would probably be it, yeah. <laughs> After the courier's departure, Edgar began to think really hard. Don't do that. And for the first time, he asked himself if it was right for him to hide away. With Helena's help and the maintenance bot's guidance, Edgar progressively forgot his own inadequacy. And though he remained that strange little oddball, he nevertheless found his place in the library by becoming a teacher for young children. Though his teaching skills were practically non-existent, he did provide endless amusement to the children he was in charge of. It was kind of like when kids are misbehaving and you just chuck an iPad in front of them. <laughs> After a while, the young ones discovered that enlightenment wouldn't come from Edgar's poor tutelage, but from their own curiosity. The maintenance bot resumed his numerous duties with his usual stoicism. St st stoicism. Tell them that such insults will not work on me because I am a stoic. One of them tells me it's pronounced stoic, not stoic. Break down and dry in the street! His dry, methodical work would ensure that the library's timeless collection would endure with the passing of time. On the occasion, he would help Helena in nursing Edgar back to some semblance of mental health. And though he never forgave his master's poor choices and misguided tyranny, he still quietly mourned his death. As for the courier, it was now time for him to resume his quest. While Hypatia had been a strange step in his journey, he couldn't shake the feeling that it set something right within him. These machines had struggled with their own sentience to become more than what they were. In fact, he was not so different. He was also seeking himself, and maybe that meant becoming something different as well. 
a super sleuth that solves murder mysteries. That's what I'm doing. I'm not. I'm not a bounty hunter anymore. I just solve mysteries now. Well, that was a fun little jaunt. Happy we were able to solve the problems with the library. You be good, little Night Stalker. You be good. You make sure that nobody gets into the library and no one reads those those nasty, awful books that tell people how to do horrible things like build atomic bombs. You be good. All right. I guess I have nothing else to say about the library. Yeah. It was, uh, it was the time. I hope we don't run into Roland while we're out and about again. <laughs> if we do, I'm not putting him back together. We'll have to figure out which ravine he gets dumped in so we can dump him in said ravine. Probably the one designated as the Roland Dumping Ravine. <laughs> He's there so frequently it's named after him. Hi. Oh, he's coming to check out the library! What a fuck! I ran through a fuck! I ran through a fuck! Ah! So what, what is there interesting down here? There's my room, for starters, which, as you can see, has been decorated with the utmost taste and refinement. Yeah. The engine yep, room, it's nice. which is notorious for the possibility that by overloading it, we would probably destroy the whole place. Could be bad. And finally, the incredible maintenance workshop where our master would do amazing things, like create sentient life out of scrap metal, playing with nature's principles for kicks, and opening up our guts to do wondrous things with our insides. Yay! The room is undoubtedly the most awesome place in the world, but I don't like it very much at all. Why don't you like it? No, seriously, the thing is so frightening that simply by talking about it, I may get stuck in a loop, stuck in a loop, stuck in a loop. 